Welcome, we are Table Goth, and this is a video on how to make a coterie. Which a coterie is a group of vampires. <laughs> They're together working for <laughs> a, some sort of common cause. It's a fancy word for like, in any other game, it'd be like your party. But party sounds too fun for World of Darkness, so in this mm -hmm. game, it's a coterie. Coterie is something that you can, there's a couple ways to go about this. You can make your coterie idea before you make your characters, or you can make, everyone makes their characters, and then you come together and figure out how they work into coterie. Um, one is definitely easier for the storyteller than the other. Obviously, if you have the coterie idea first, everyone mm -hmm. can make a character to fit into that. So things go smoothly, yep. your storyteller's an easy time, and it's fun <laughs> for everyone. Or there's another way where everyone makes individuals, and you as a storyteller have to figure out why the hell they are together and why they should continue being together, and then it's... And then that can be a constant question the entire time you're playing. Yeah, which is sometimes really it's fun to figure out, too. Very good drama. Very good drama. <laughs> Uh, one thing that you sort of have to have one way or another is the, the common goal like I spoke about. In our Taste of Youth game, uh, we didn't build a coterie first by any means. Mm -hmm. I, the, our session zero was you're going to be playing high schoolers and we're going to be playing right at the time you're bit um, or embraced. So it was up to me to figure out why they would stick together, especially they all make characters mm -hmm. who didn't necessarily get along in their... Like Literally didn't like each other in high school. Yeah. So it was nice that there was a connection. They weren't yeah. strangers who were like, hey, we're working together now. Like, they knew each other. They didn't necessarily like each other. So they had the shared trauma. And, all right, we're all, this happened to all of us. Let's figure out what happened. And as revealed in the story, there's a reason why it happened to that group in particular. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still that a little bit of a thread to keep them together. And mostly out of desperation, they have to mm -hmm. stick together because they don't know anything else. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's a fun way of doing it. I think a lot of traditional games probably... I feel like players want to make their character first mm -hmm. and then probably work with their storyteller to figure out, okay, what's what's your job in the coterie? A lot of chronicles start off with you figuring out your coterie and why you're a coterie, and you sort of go through those uh, growing pains together, which is good drama, good role play. Um, but some might want to be like, okay, let's play a team of like people who work for the prince or a team of anarchs wanting mm -hmm. to do something... Uh, the book is a lot of actually good examples of, like, coterie types you can do. And they have, like, coterie building. So if you want to pick your your coterie, you can use, it's actually, like, character creation. Where you use dots in, like, your haven, your domain, uh, your hunting ground, all those things. If you want to, like, really get a nitty-gritty. Um, I don't know. I haven't done it that way. That way could be fun. But, uh, I don't know, the organically... Butting heads, figuring mm -hmm. out why are together is fun, too, if you have the right players for it. Uh, another thing to consider, uh, whichever way you're making a coterie, is World of Darkness. And Vampire, especially, is a game of uh, not necessarily getting along. There's a lot of secrets, politics, and backstabbing. So it's going to be natural that one or more of your characters are going to have secrets about them that they might not necessarily want the rest of the coterie to know. So that's definitely on the storyteller to figure out, okay, this this will work, how to sort of have it play in the background, when will be an appropriate time to bring it out, or let the character decide when to bring it out. Um, but most games I've seen, there's a lot of, uh, it's sort of those fun reveals, mm -hmm. where it's a fun reveal for you to your other players, like, hey, my character is this going on that you didn't know about. It's super fun to like have the, because World of Darkness is, like, reality, but just so much worse, which is hard to imagine sometimes. Right. But, uh, <laughs> so it's fun to have, like, these terrible things that, you know, it's hard to imagine just out of character, and then it being thrown into the story and you have to adjust uh, to this character you're playing with, all of a sudden having these terrible background things happening. Uh, and it's so much fun. You get so much, like, satisfaction out of it. Uh, yeah, it's great to throw everybody else under the bus because of your secrets. Yeah. It's a good time. More fun for some people than others, the secret havers and the secret finder outers. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also stuff that goes along. We did do a relationship map. I think relationship map's good to do. Yeah. Even if your characters are strangers, you can sort of predict, like, eh, here's how I, my guy will or my person will probably think of your person. Um, 
We still did one of those. Yeah, I which forgot is, about that until the other day. I found mine. I was like, yeah, that still holds holds up pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> you're sort of just how to because you want everyone connected. You mm-hmm. want all you want your coterie connected to each other, whether it's through like the loosest association mm-hmm. or like sharing some secret. Yeah. You want some threads holding them to individuals as well as that main thread holding your group together, no matter how thin that might be. Um, there's also something that's sort of a, a goal. Well. Some groups have like really strict PvP rules. Vampire is something that you're probably gonna have to do something not in the best interest of the rest of your coterie, mm-hmm. whether it's your choice because you're trying to get ahead, but it, this is also a game where all the other kindred are trying to manipulate you and pull your strings, blood bonding you maybe, so you're going against them <laughs> even if you don't want to. So that's, a, that's definitely a discussion to have when you're coterie building. Uh, especially there might already be sort of Something thin holding them together, and you want the possibility. Or if you want to make it a rules like, hey, that you're always going to get along. Like, no one's going to go against the group. That could be a thing, too, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I feel like the World of Darkness should always have that threat there, at least. Yeah. I think, I mean, just like with everything in, like, gaming, you should have conversations about things. Um, just kind of fleshing out what people are comfortable with and what they're not. Uh, but I definitely think it's more fun if everyone's comfortable with having that kind of tension to just let that tension be there. Um, just the unknown of what could happen every episode or every time you play, uh, I think adds a lot of like organic chemistry to the conversations and the fights and the infighting that happens sometimes. Yeah, when you're not quite sure what the other person's going to get up to or mm-hmm. how they're going to respond to things, that's, that's exciting. And as a storyteller, makes your job easy if they're fighting amongst each other sometimes. You just <laughs> you just sit back and let that happen. Just let it go. Uh, which also gets into uh, Chronicle Tenets. I don't know. We probably should have covered that better in ours. But that's something that you kind of come together as a group. I mean, like, here's sort of the themes we want to explore. I mean, the storyteller <laughs> could decide on that and be like, hey, here's the themes I'm exploring. Mm-hmm. Make characters that, uh, are you guys okay with that? Mm-hmm. And have that reflect in your characters. That sort of goes into the what you're comfortable with, the PvP stuff and all mm-hmm. of that as well. It's just sort of knowing the 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 big parts your story's going to hit. And then making a character to be able to engage with that in an interesting way. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing with a coterie usually comes a domain, meaning where your people live, your haven, your hunting ground, whatever. Domain's sort of a an RP thing. I mean, you can use the coterie creation to just make up your own as well, but it's also sort of a, a, a common reward in game. Mm-hmm. If you do well, surviving, you either like take <laughs> domain or you're given domain, and I think that's sort of an interesting thing to think of as a. I think that should be sort of a coterie decision. We came together, and I think Evelyn, one character, sort of wanted her big, nice haven or whatever, mm-hmm. so we sort of agreed that was our, at least starting off, our, our home base. Because you want sort of the feel of, like, okay, where is your coterie going to sleep during the day? Where are they going to gather? Where are they going to have these intense moments? Uh, it's something that's probably good to figure out before you start. Yeah, safe spaces are so important in World of Darkness, I think especially... Um, because you can't just be anywhere, like, through an entire day. You have to move constantly. So I think uh, having that kind of stuff figured out, even if just, like, slightly before going into it, is always good. Um, But it is fun to kind of figure that out organically while you play because survival, you know, I I deal it. It's so rare in the game. So I think um, getting that coterie feels like such a big accomplishment as a player. It's kind of fun to kind of figure out where you belong. Like yeah, literally. like it's our spot mm-hmm. and then take it from there. Uh, other terms that are used in like the actual code of creation. So we talked about domain a little bit. Uh, there is chasse, chase, chassis. I think it's a word they made up. The closest I could find is chasse, which is a dance it's ballet French. thing. Yeah. Uh, in this game, it means... What does it mean? It's your hunting ground. How good your hunting ground is. So it affects your hunting roles w- within your domain. Um, which, for us, I lean more on the predator types as mm-hmm. sort of how you hunt. Um, but it could be a thing where it's like, okay, this is our hunting ground as a coterie, mm-hmm. and sort of work it out from there. I, mean, I don't know. How, how would you feel more about like a territorial thing versus like... I mean, predator type can work within your domain and chasse, mm-hmm. but... 
I don't know. I've, I've always thought hunting, well, at least in our group, is a little more individualized. Yeah, because we're all very individual characters in our coterie. Everyone does things differently. Um, so I think it would... I think it would be difficult with our specific coterie to just have, like, a hunting ground. And I think that would also bring up different issues, like different things we have to protect or, you mm -hmm. know, politics you have to deal with. So I think it depends on which ways your game is leaning to begin with. If you're really politically based, then maybe you have to protect a little bit more or um, proving yourself or, you know, different things like that. I think it's all about what style you're leaning for in your in your haven and then out from there yeah if you sort of want to do like the nitty-gritty with your hunting mm -hmm. roles and your care your code recreation or if you want to have it a little more on the fly organic uh, another thing is your lean how well integrated your coterie is with their domain meaning if they're like known entities in the domain maybe they're club owners so they're sort of known in the area or they're part of some sort of establishment that's vital to the neighborhood or if they're just nobodies and you just got to hunt in secret um, again, I think that goes more in the politics. Mm -hmm. If it's something you guys are an established coterie already, then you could put dots into stuff like that. That's not really something that's going to be an on-the-fly decision. I think that's kind of neat to build on, too. If you don't want to start as established, then you kind of... Yeah, it's another sort of role-play reward. Yeah. And then there's Portillon? Portillon? Am I <laughs> Portillon? Maybe, maybe I was supposed uh, to. It's your know. security, because I can't say security. <laughs> uh, which, as you hinted at before, super important. Um, this coterie has learned time and time again. You got to have someone watch where you sleep during the day, because other people know that's when you're weak. Mm -hmm. uh, they figured it out now. Took many sessions. Some of us just sleep in a place where security that's is true. already an added, an added feature. Mm -hmm. So that's another... Uh, coterie building uh, resource you can use is how secure your your area is. Uh, and then there's coterie backgrounds, which we did use. I, I think coterie backgrounds are cool, where you can use some of your own background points, or you can, as a storyteller, give them so many like coterie points to use building their coterie. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, some backgrounds work better than others for like shared things. Um, I think uh, one we use, which is probably pretty common, is Mola, or like a Someone who's looking out for the coterie, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they're playing neonates or fledglings. It's nice if they spend some of their points to have someone to show them the ropes. Um, but that could be used for things like maybe, again, if they're a club owner, mm -hmm. they can use it for like resources. Maybe they all have a shared income because of this business they run. Um, some are going to work out as well, but some are kind of cool shared coterie things. If that's something where you're really establishing and getting out the details of your coterie before you start the game. Uh, so going back to sort of our coterie goals, it's again, you want them to sort of want the same thing or have an idea of like a general mm -hmm. purpose. Uh, but it's also, I think, a little boring if everyone's like, okay, we want to overthrow the prince and this is how we want to do it. If there's different ideas on how to accomplish these goals, like I said, a similar goal is great. Um, but if everyone has the same idea on how to do it, that gets a little more... I don't know. I, I like a little bit of inner coterie drama as a sense of people have different ideas on how to accomplish things. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of good role playing comes out. And that's where you sort of get to lean into your character. It's like, this is how my character thinks we should solve the issue. Someone else might have a better idea or you combine your ideas. Stuff like that, I think, is where a lot of the meat of the game is. Yeah, I... It's World of Darkness. So the idea that all of your undead monsters... Just get along. It feels kind of like Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew. And that's yeah. not what it is. Uh, so, again, good conversations beforehand about being comfortable with those kinds of arguments and things like that. But it definitely adds a little, you know, spice to it. If you, <laughs> if you can um, have differences of opinions because you're playing different characters. And it's okay to conflict because that leads to... Um, for the character development and drama and story points, um, talks it brings you into you know your touchstones and things like that, um, which just I think makes it an overall overall like well developed game and story and um, just fun. Yeah, 
And uh, this, this is a balance of that. That's one of the harder parts about this game, I think, is if it's constant drama, mm -hmm. where, you, where also, if you're making a coder and two people have the opposite <laughs> ideas on how to solve every problem, so mm -hmm. then any time he's a storyteller, it's like, all right, you guys need to accomplish this. And then you know, okay, let's fight about how to do this. That could get tedious. Yeah. Okay. You guys aren't as bad as some others I've seen. I don't want to call anyone out, but it, it could be worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could everyone be worse. has those moments, I think. Yeah. And it, I think so many things go into why, yeah. for some reason, this specific session or this specific scene just is not working out, and recognizing that is okay, too, I think. Yeah, like I said, that happens, and I think it's fun when that happens. As long as it's not every single time the mm -hmm. coder has to do something, it's, yeah. all right, let's fight about it as a coterie. Like, it's annoying. Yeah. Also, I think an interesting thing to do, which you all played very young vampires, so it didn't come into play as much, is uh, if you're playing an established group, sort of, this goes more along with like building your setting, building your city, but it's cool to like look like, know your setting. Usually you're playing in something you and your players are familiar with the area, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's cool building into that, like pulling like real places and connecting mm -hmm. your character with the setting. So you yeah. want your own background and you want connections with the players, but you also, it also helps out the storyteller, gives them ammo to use against you, is uh, connect them to the setting, connect, connect them to the city. Um, the neighborhoods, the history, especially if you're an older kindred or something like that, mm -hmm. could really spark a lot of ideas for people to use and could set up some really cool things. And again, it's just another way to, you want your character connected to as many things as possible. So storyteller as many things to use against you as possible. Mm -hmm. I think there's something to be said uh, with combining real history with like a fantasy world. I think it just creates layers that are really fun and it's so neat to explore and make up backgrounds for actual things that happened. I, I don't know. I think it, especially with ours, because we stream it. And so yeah, we do. it's neat that. We, we, get it, to share, <laughs> we get to share like our history and build on that and just explore some place that we kind of it's mundane for the most part but adding something to it i think makes it more exciting and i don't know yeah yeah i think it's cool too so even though they're not old kindred mm -hmm. you still have connection with like okay my character like to hang out mm -hmm. at uh at this concert venue so it's cool just mm -hmm. pulling in a real things yeah so like I said, not only, and that's, I think that you want your coterie to have a place in your setting. So you want the individuals and the coder itself to sort of have some sort of mark on the area. Uh, whether that's they build up and make that mark or they start with those connections. Another interesting thing is because of this, again, depending on how your game is, um, this is a hierarchy in every vampire city, mm -hmm. even if you're an anarch. So there's a good chance someone in your coterie is going to get like a title. And that's an interesting thing to figure out either through play. I mean, if you have a coterie where all of them are trying to be the prince, that's going to be an... Obviously, that can't happen. Yeah. Unless they have some weird... I mean, maybe they could work it out. But so that's a cool thing, too, is you'll get to a point to where... I mean, coteries don't necessarily have, like, a party leader, but sometimes they do. And sometimes it's a very real, like, hierarchy thing. Like, mm -hmm. hey, this person is represents this their clan and now they're sort of in charge of the coterie or this person works for a baron or someone gets made a baron or made a seneschal or made something that's a cool thing to think about too is your coterie eventually there's going to be especially if you get connected with the mm -hmm. city there's going to be titles and responsibilities that go with that and that's sort of interesting too you want your coterie to have their goal mm -hmm. but it's sort of fun when certain outside goals pull yeah. Like either against that, so you have to figure out, like, okay, how do I use the coterie to my advantage, or how do I use my new responsibility to my advantage for the coterie? Yeah. That sort of balance can be really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially, I mean, you don't have to have infighting for there to be those kinds of pulls, like the pulling away from the group. Um, and it's fun to explore those positive things being kind of an issue, and how... You know, you decide if you have the same goals or maybe those create cracks that they didn't even realize they had. And I think that's just a really cool way to explore just how your characters really interact. Like, what are their real goals and how do those change yeah. as you go along? Once, so when certain characters actually start getting what they want, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see how, how that affects the overall makeup of the group. Um, yeah. I think that's it. So yeah, coteries. It's your vampire, it's your adventuring party, except mm -hmm. a lot less fun adventures and yeah. 
sometimes less partying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's sort of a, a fun stuck together, I think. Yeah, I think it's... Again, depending on how you set it up, it'll feel differently. But I think, especially with ours, it's like this family that didn't really want to be a family. They got stuck together and mm -hmm. they don't have anyone else. So they got to figure it out kind of thing. And that's that's always just an interesting group of dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. That's and nice also... Uh, comparing it to other tabletop games, mm -hmm. some games it's easy to build your party by class. You're like, okay, we mm -hmm. don't have a healer, I'll play the healer. Mm -hmm. We yeah. need a we need a mage. This isn't really. I mean, there's different clans, like, but you don't really need yeah. any one clan. You need leader. Yeah, or you might need like, hey, this person's good at social or, situations, yeah. or this person can kill someone with their hands if we need them to. So there's a little bit of that building, but again, because this mm -hmm. game dive so much into personal narrative and backstory mm -hmm. rather than like class features there's going to be a lot more nuances with putting a group together uh, which is more difficult but also mm -hmm. I think a lot more, more rewarding yeah. um, alright that's all of our expert advice on coteries uh, if you want to see a coterie in action smooth a coterie in uh, action. Uh, you could check out Taste of Youth or Fall of London. I think that coterie worked. Fall of London was Yeah, that's another well coterie balanced. that uh, got thrown together. Mm -hmm. um, but you could see how a that works out. Very different results, say, yeah, for but, the most part. But also a very clear goal. common goal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. One common goal. Watch how the experts do it. And then you see how even you can easily probably do it <laughs> better. Uh, probably. All right. That's everything. Bye. <laughs>